Thank you for joining us today. Today's message is entitled, Unlimited Blessings, taught by our Master Teacher, Apostle Jeremiah Cummings. God bless all of you on the day before my 70th birthday. Amen. I thank all of you who've already started with the happy birthday greetings and those of you who have already started sending uh, gifts to the cash app uh, dash um, it's dollar sign apostle 1920 I thank God for all of you who appreciate the words that you're getting from us we tried to do things with different cameras and I'm just gonna have to buy a professional TV camera it's just that simple uh, but with your help we can buy our own uh, cameras so, um, God bless all of you. I want to talk about, you know, I'm so blessed, beloved. Uh, I was able to see an old friend of mine, called Carlos Santana, on last night in New York at the big concert that they had. And I listened to Carlos uh, Santana use some of my own words, you know, that we were blessed to be born of God. God gave us our lives and God gave us a life of miracles, uh, to perform miracles and uh, to perform blessings. We have the power to do that. Um, the, the theology world said we're just poor sinners saved by grace. I don't know who it's talking about. Must be talking about the unregenerated or those who are not born again. But if you've been born again, you're in the kingdom of God. Amen. You're in the best that God could ever give you. Amen. We have been delivered. I keep saying it from Colossians chapter number one and verse number 13 that we have been delivered from the powers of darkness and we have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son and we are in the presence of God's glory. Uh, Satan is powerless. I, you know, he's so mad with me. He tried to attack my finances this week. But I fired him. Amen. You know, one of the royalty companies wanted to take my royalties. They wanted to take more than half of my money. And I fired them. You know, and I have to go to Europe now to get my royalty. But I'm saying that he can't put a hand on us. You know, we're in the presence of God's glory. Listen to me. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 7. Listen to me. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 7, it reads like this. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The wisdom was hidden from men. Get it? You know, it was hidden because, you know, I, I keep telling you, Satan can't hide nothing because he don't really know nothing. He only know what you allow him to know. He has no knowledge. He has no power. He only knows what you're going to do when he tells you to do it when you do it. So he, he's, he, he's a master of falsehood, y'all. So the gospel is a mystery. And we speak the mystery of God. Listen to what it says. Amen. Live and in living color. Listen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The wisdom, the wisdom once hidden from man, but now revealed to us, somebody say me, but now revealed to us by God, not by me. God uses me as his vessel, but it is revealed by God. It says, but now revealed by, by us, by God, that wisdom, which God predestined before the ages, before any such thing as time. It was predestined. It was all, it was predestined. Amen. To our glory. For our glory. To lift us into the glory of his presence. Can y'all get that? This hidden mystery that is now being revealed to us by God. Amen. Uh, which before was hidden. It is to lift us up, <laughs> not tear us down. This is what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 7. Look at it in the Amplified Version. To lift us up into the glory of his presence. 
When you get into the glory of God's presence, Satan can't touch you. It's off limits. Amen. Satan can no longer get it. When you, when you have this knowledge, you become powerful. Satan can no longer attach himself to our vision. He can no longer attach himself to our destiny. We have been delivered from him. Say, I've been delivered. We have been delivered from the powers of darkness. And we have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son, our Messiah. Satan cannot come to where we are. Say it. Amen. He cannot come to where we are. It was a mystery, y'all. The church didn't get it. They don't have it. They got theology. Amen. They got theology. European theology at that. They don't have it. They can't teach you. When apostle comes, he's coming from God with the wisdom that was hidden to teach you what you never read or what you didn't see or what you didn't understand. Theology don't make apostles. Amen. They, they're not anointed to a make. Theology comes from Rome. Comes from Rome. You hear what I'm saying? That's why the Romans wanted to kill Jesus. The Romans had the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, and they were against Jesus. They were religious, but they were against Jesus. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Instead of them bowing down and said, this must be the Messiah, the one that Moses talked about. No, the scribes, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees were religious. We got that today. We got a lot of religion and no righteousness, no character of God. Amen. So I come not under nobody but God. I'm not under no man. I tried that. It don't work. Amen. I'm under God. I'm God sent. God anointed. God tested. Allowed the devil to test me. Yeah, man. But I passed the test. And now I come to take Satan's head off and give you the power to let you know that you have already been delivered when you understand that you have been delivered and God has lifted us, us into the glory of his presence off limits to the devil. Look in Romans chapter number 16, verse number 25. It says, Now to him who is able to establish and strengthen you in the faith according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of the mystery of the plan of salvation and liberation, which has been kept secret for a long, long time. You and I are living in the greatest day of human existence. At the time when the world is in crisis. We just read about uh, 10 people dying in the flood in Tennessee yesterday. Afghanistan. And people in Afghanistan trying to get out of there. Now ISIS and the Taliban and everybody is coming in to take over Afghanistan. I'm telling you, it's, it's a... It's a COVID-19 on the rise again. Children being affected. Amen. Murder everywhere. Carjacking. I mean, storms coming up the East Coast. Going into New York. They had to cancel the concert at last night because of the storms. I'm telling you, we're living. The fires in California, twice the size of New York City. Can you see? But God said at that time, my people... In the book of Daniel, chapter number 12, and verse number 1, it says there will be a time of trouble since there was a nation, uh, but at that time shall my people be delivered. 
You and I have been delivered. We're being delivered. There are people, we had three new students to come on to the School of the Prophets University last night. Three new students. Amen. And, and, and including T-Quest, who has her own radio platform, came on last night. We got others coming on. Almost 1,100 or more. In the School of the Prophets University, we started with five people. People want the truth. And God has chosen to bring me into your life to bring you the truth that has been hidden from ages but now is being revealed unto the saints to lift us up into the glory of his presence. You are his glory. Amen. You become his glory. He says in Isaiah 43 and verse number 7, he said, even everyone that is called by my name I have created him for my glory. You were created for the glory of God, the kavod of God, the presence of God, the righteousness of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. Amen. You were created for him. Amen. And don't let nobody tell you anything different. Don't let people pull you back into a dope doctrine called theology, European theology. If you want to be religious, stay in it. But if you want the truth, come on up out of it. Amen and amen. Now let me read this. In Romans 16 and verse number 25, and I'm going to show you a mystery in a minute that many of you never seen before. That of concerning your conception and your birth before you even came into the world. Listen to this. In Romans chapter 16 and verse number 25. Now to him who is able to, to establish and strengthen you, to establish you and strengthen you in the faith. Well, how do you get established and strengthened in the faith? According to the book of Romans, it says, um, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The only way you go get faith and confidence you got to hear. You don't need to hear no fables, no stories. You need to hear the word of God. You don't need to hear no hooping, no hollering. You don't need to hear all of that. You need the word. Jesus didn't hoop. Jesus didn't holler and hoop and jump over pulpits. Come on. Follow him. Amen. Follow your example. What you see Jesus do. He said, the works that I do shall you do. So Jesus performed miracles. We can perform miracles. Jesus beat the devil. We can beat the devil. Come on. Amen. Jesus took two fish and five loaves and fed 5,000 men, not including women and children. We can feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Amen. We can give shelter to the homeless. We can do that. We can do that. We can build. My son, Jeremiah Jr., is here from Orlando, Florida. He's out working on the grounds right now. He's pouring landscaping rocks, pulling up weeds. He's going to put up the shelves in the garage. I mean, he's a big help. All the way from Orlando, Florida, Jeremiah Cummings Jr. He's here. He's, work out. he's outside working right now. But I told him, I said, son, you were building computers when you were 15. My son was ordering the parts to the computers and building them at home. We didn't have to buy him a computer. And it had high-speed internet on it. I said, Jeremiah, I said, look, you're in your early 30s. I said, you could be the next Bill Gates. I said, you can build computers. You've been building them since you were 15 years old. I said, then why waste your time working for somebody else? Build computers. I'll back you. We will back him. Amen. And we'll come up with a name for his own computers. And we will pour and invest into him so that he can have his own computer. And we will buy from him. Thousands will buy from him. Millions will buy from him. I'm talking about Jeremiah Cummings Jr. This boy been building computers. Hey, Sister Zelma, you want a computer that don't, don't never, can nobody get into? My son, Jeremiah, can order the parts and build your computer and put your name on it. Name the computer Zelma. 
I'm telling you, he's a genius. He's been like that. He's a workaholic. He loves to work now. <laughs> Amen. So look, we're praying for him. Jeremiah Cummings Jr. He's on the, uh, he's on Facebook, and and he builds computers from scratch. I say you could be the next Bill Gates. I say here you are working for somebody for twenty dollars an hour, and you could be making twenty billion dollars or twenty million dollars a year. I got to get him right. And he's going to be here with me for a few days, and I'm going to pump it into him. Let's build computers. Amen. <laughs> we got to change the world, y'all. Just you and me. I wanted to put that in. My daughter, Jalisha Cummings, is here from Washington, D.C. She come in, and she has a cleaning company, and she's cleaned up the whole. She just went through and throw out stuff and cleaning up and dusting and, you know, getting everything ready. I mean, you know, my daughter, Nadia Cummings, is on her way in from Orlando, Florida. She arrives this afternoon. I haven't seen her in eight years. She's my baby girl. But God is turning everything around in the midst of a crisis. Amen. And that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, John chapter number 12 and verse number 31, at this moment, the world is in crisis. You tell me this ain't on time. But look what it says in the scripture. It says, at this moment, the world is in crisis. Now, Satan, the ruler of this world, will be thrown out. Now, who going to throw him out? If he's going to be thrown out, who going to throw him out? If somebody come up in your house acting a fool, you throw them out. The Bible says, Satan will be thrown. Thrown out. Come on, who gonna throw him out? I've been teaching you that you are the light of the world from Jesus' own mouth. He said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that other men might see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. You are the light of the world. Tell me what that means. Light is the eliminator of darkness. Light and darkness can't dwell in the same place. So light, you are, eliminates darkness, Satan. Amen. And when light comes on, darkness flees. Colossians says, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 13, says, you have been delivered from the powers of darkness. And you have been translated into the kingdom of of the Messiah. Well, Satan can't come there because where you've been translated to, that has put you in the glory of God's presence as it is written in 2 Corinthians chapter number one, chapter number 2 and verse number 7 that he lift us up into the glory of his presence. It's my birthday tomorrow. And we're going to do exploits. Now, I know you may haven't been to Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 32, but I want to explain to you what exploits are. It's in the King James Version. It says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant of God shall he corrupt with flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, what are exploits? What are we we're gonna do? We're gonna do the word exploits means that you're gonna do things that have not been done before in your uh in your ancestry, in your family, even in your world. You gonna God God is gonna give you some creative ideas. My God, my God. Exploits. Look at the word exploit. He said the people that do know their God. That means the people who have an intimate relationship with God. The word know means intimately related to God. It said the people that do know their God shall be strong, powerful, and do exploits. They will do things that have never been done before. My son builds computers. He, he buys the parts online and he builds the whole computer. Well, he can teach other people to do that. And build his own company. That's an exploit. God gives you, an exploit is when God gives you an idea that causes you to flourish. 
The book of Psalms 92 and verse number 12 says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Well, God will give you an idea. Helping Hands Restoration Ministries down in, um, in Jackson, Mississippi, and now moving. Now they opened up two locations under the uh, guidance, amen, of Ambassador Joe Thomas and Deacon Steve Thomas. They're members of our ministry. Helping Hands Restoration Ministry was an idea. God gave her an idea. God gave me the logo. And I mixed the logo with her idea and built the website. Okay, now it's spreading to Grenada, Mississippi. I, I see it in that. I see it with our brother Isaac uh, Makala over in Kenya. Well, we can put Helping Hands Restoration in Africa now. Amen. Uh, Brother Jarrell down in South Africa. We can put Helping Hands Restoration Ministry down in South Africa now. Uh, Ambassador Zelma up in Canada. We can put Helping Hands Restoration Ministries up in Canada now. And it begins with an idea. When the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 32, he said, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. We do exploits because God gives us a divine idea. Amen. And when we work on the idea of God, he gives the increase. And he'll spread it all over the world, beloved. Amen. I, you know, God has given me a lot of divine ideas. Amen. When my mother took me to see little Anthony and the Imperials and Sir Walter Jackson and Chuck Berry and and uh, I saw so many entertainers at the Washington Coliseum when I was about 11 years old. And I, and I, I, could, I, sit, I went to the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C. I saw James Brown's show. I stayed all day. I watched all three shows in the morning all the way to the night. I watched the James Brown show. I listened to the JBs, his band. You know, I saw the Temptations. I mean, I saw the Miracles. I saw Martha Reese and the Vandellas. And then I said to myself, I, I want to do that. I can do that. You know, and uh, in my book, From Gold to Glory, I have, I have some copies of the hard copies probably by next weekend. I tell the story. I started out in the House of Prayer for All People in Augusta, Georgia, listening to a powerful band in that church with trombones and tubas and drums and saxophones. And the, move, and the, the music moved me and the, moves, and the music moved James Brown. James Brown went to the same church in Augusta, Georgia. So our musical career gave us ideas to become professionals. And then finally, in 1971, I met Harold Melvin. And Harold Melvin was looking for me. I ended up singing at Carnegie Hall. You know, standing ovation. Traveled around the world five times. I wanted to retire at 31. They won't let me retire. Now my music is bigger than it was with Harold Melvin and the Blues. And now my own music by Jerry Cummings is bigger than it ever was. I can't seem to get out why, but that's my gift that God gave me. He gave me an idea. I'm saying to some of you that are listening to me today, God has given you ideas that are divine. You have been intimidated by what somebody said. Forget people and what they think. They not your brain. If you think it, thoughts become things. Your thought <laughs> becomes things things. You attract and you draw things to you by how you think. As a man thinketh, that's word. As a man thinketh, so is he. You become what you think. You say I'm broke as hell, don't expect no money to come. Amen. But I'm so thankful that money comes to me and multiple streams of income on a continuous basis. I told you just last week, the lady in front of us had all these groceries and she ran out of money. It was, she owed $108 more. And I said to the cashier lady, how much does she owe? She said she still owed $108. And so I said, we'll pay the $108 so that she can get all her stuff. I didn't know that her mother had MS. I didn't know that she had babies. You know, I just knew that she needed help. So we paid the $108 in the grocery store for the lady. We packed our stuff in the car. We drove home. I went across the street to our mailbox. I opened up the mailbox, and there was an envelope in there from California. 
I looked at my wife. I said, that's money. I said, it's probably a thousand dollars. We weren't expecting no thousand dollars, beloved. Believe me. She opened up the envelope and she showed me a check for one thousand dollars. Now, that's 30 minutes from the time we paid the lady's bill. And that goes with give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men given to your bosom. So uh, what I'm saying to you is, 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 is true. It's the word of God. Jesus said it. It is true. Amen. So when I say um, tomorrow's my 70th birthday, you know, and we have a cash app. We didn't always have a cash app. That's a dollar sign, Apostle 1920. And I'm saying you give and watch what happens. I test that. I will test you on that. You give to my 70th birthday, which is tomorrow. You can give today, and I will lift you up in prayer. And I guarantee you, you're going to see some miraculous things happen in your life. You can take it or let it alone. I, I really don't need your money. I, I want you to be a blessing to yourself and to the ministry. We want to buy TV cameras now. We need a television cameras. We got lights. We need a camera. I mean, I tried other cameras. They don't work. I mean, I tried other platforms. They look blurry. I mean, but we want to be able to buy, if it costs 30,000 people. I mean, if it costs $30,000, $40,000. Well, 30 people can give $1,000. Or, or 30 people can, or 40 people can give $1,000. We go buy the camera and then next thing you know, look like we're on television. I'm saying, we, and we're going to get the money. Because I'm calling it in. I am so grateful and I'm so thankful that money comes to us in multiple streams of income on a continuous basis. Multiple streams of income, not just from ministry, not just from music. Amen. Amen. Not just from my book, but multiple streams of income on a continuous basis. You take those words and you eat them and put them on and wear them and watch how the money flows. Now, let me show you a mystery. You were born rich. <laughs> You were born with the favor of God. Let me show you a mystery, and I got to go. In the book of Job, y'all listen to me carefully now as I explain this mystery and show you that God has granted you life and favor even before you came into the world. When I listened to Carlos Santana on yesterday, and he said, we were born from the Creator to produce miracles. I said, that's my teaching. Well, Carlos, I did, I did concerts. I did jazz concerts with Carlos in, in the early 70s, Carlos Santana. You know, and he was in New York last night. And he, if you watch him, you'll hear what he said. That we were created to produce miracles because we're born of God. And he said that. But let me close with this. In the book of Job, chapter number 10. Verse number 10 through 12. I want to explain this mystery because I know many of you have probably never read it before. He says, Thou hast poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese. Listen to this. Thou hast poured me out like milk or as milk and curdled me like cheese. Thou hast poured me out like semen, like sperm, and you have curdled me like cheese, an embryo. Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, and hast fenced me in with bones and sinews. Listen. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. That's a mystery. And I'm bringing it to you. Before, while you were sperm, I keep telling you, 150 million sperm cells entered into the womb and one of them made it and became like cheese, like, like, like an embryo. <laughs> that was you and me. Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh and fish me in with bones and sinews. Thou hast granted me life and favor. Now, then this was before you even came out the womb. 
You were born rich. You had the favor of God because out of 150 million sperm cells, you made it. You were favored by God. And he granted you life. What kind of life? Eternal life. A glorious life. A victorious life. A powerful life. A miraculous life. And thy visitation has preserved my spirit. The reason why the devil couldn't kill us was because God visited us. He came to dwell within us. A book of The book of John, chapter number 17 and verse number 22. Jesus said, And the glory which you have given to me, I've given unto them. And the glory which you have given to me, unto me, I've given unto them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. That's the visitation. Um, I want to come on today, the day before my 70th birthday, to tell you that God has an abundant blessing, an unlimited blessing for you. An unlimited blessing. That's the word in Hebrew, barakah. 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 It is the Spirit of God that empowers us to be successful and opposition don't have a chance to stop us. It is Baraka, that is when no weapon formed against you and me will prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment is condemned. It is our heritage. We have inherited that, according to Isaiah 54, verse number 17. So now, listen to me. Unlimited blessings. Say Baraka. B A R R A K A H. Baraka. Unlimited blessings from the book of Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse number 20. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, our greatest hopes, or our greatest dreams according to his power that is at work within us, the power of faith. I'm telling you, beloved, I love teaching. I thank God for allowing me 30 years ago to go to Israel and to study with the School of the Prophets University in Israel 30 years ago this month. I turned 40 years old and I ended up in Israel seven days after I turned 40. That was 30 years ago. And I began to evolve, I began to grow. I went up in the mountains and, and, and I saw things in the mountains and in the, and in the clouds that I couldn't talk about. For three years, I wouldn't dare tell nobody what happened to me in the mountains of Israel. I wouldn't dare tell nobody. They would have thought I'd lost my mind, but it happened. It happened. And I saw God like I'd never seen God before. And ever since that time, Satan has been trying to destroy me, my character, destroy my life. I passed away in, on August um, the 7th, 2017. I died in the bowling alley. God raised me from the dead. <clears throat> I had massive blood clots on both lungs. And God raised me from the dead. And three days after that, my doctors told me I could go home. Amen and amen. So I'm blessed. Tomorrow I turn 70. My children are coming in. Jeremiah is here. Jeremiah Cummings Jr. is here. Delicia Cummings is here. And Nadia Cummings will be here today after 4 o'clock. We'll take pictures together and put them up on Facebook. But I want you to stand with us. Pray for me. Pray that God give me 70 more years. I would love to be around for I would love to be 140. <laughs> I don't mind. I want to be 140 and still look good. <laughs> and still be in love with my beautiful wife, Dr. Gloria. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you. Be a blessing to yourself today. 
You can go to ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com, ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com, and you can give a donation there. Amen. I'm telling you, we'll spread our wealth. Or you can go to Dollar Sign Apostle 1920. Amen. We'll start building. We'll start buying TV cameras. We'll, we will invest into Jeremiah Cummins Jr. who builds computers from scratch and make him the next Bill Gates. He builds them from scratch. He's been building computers since he was 15 years old. You pray for us. I want to say thank God for Jerusalem, for Israel, for Harold Melvin, who gave me a chance to become a Blue Note. Amen. For all of those, Bishop T.D. Jakes, who laid hands on me in 1997, I want to thank God for all of them. For my wife, Gloria. Amen. A praying, powerful woman of God. For all of the supporters, the three who came on last night to become parts of the School of the Prophets University. Amen. And for all of the supporters, Sister Brenda, I know you're on a fixed income, but you give when you can. I thank God for you. You've been with us since Blog Talk Radio, and I thank God for you. Thank God for the Madisons. Uh, their money comes in every month from Tennessee. They support us, and we thank God for you. Sister Tia, amen, you know you're a blessing. <laughs> you're just such a great blessing, Sister Tia. And Noah, we thank God for you. We, you got a birthday coming in about three or four days. And Chris, we thank God for you. And Jerron, we thank God for all of you. My daughter, Michelle, Lady M. Cummings, God bless all of you. My son, who owns a vegetarian restaurant down in Charlotte, North Carolina, Jamil, Jamil Amiel. Thank God for you. I'm telling you, beloved, I thank God for all of you. Am I missing anybody, Glow? I know you said Zelma. Oh, Zelma. She's posting scriptures. Yeah. Zelma, I know I didn't give you Job. Um, I know I didn't give you the book of Job, but I know that you'll find it. Job chapter 10, 10 through 12. Bless before birth. That's the whole birth process in Job chapter 10, verse 10 through 12. That's the whole birth, and we were born rich. We were born with favor. We were born with the presence of the Spirit of God. Amen. And to my friend Carlos uh, Santana, powerful words last night at I Love New York concert. Thank God for you, brother. God bless all of you. I'll see you on Thursday night. My birthday is tomorrow. I look forward to hearing from you, and may God continue to bless you, and thank God for all of you. I'm glad that the day is August the 22nd, tomorrow, August the 23rd. I'm happy to see 70 years. One more person, Private Harry Pierce Jr., who told me on his way to Vietnam, if I don't come back, Jerry, if I'm killed in Vietnam, promise me, that you'll keep singing because one day you're going to make it. About six months later, close to a year later, he was killed in Vietnam. He stepped on a landmine. And those words that he told me when I was like 17 years old came true. I kept hearing him say, Jerry, if I don't come back from Vietnam, promise me you'll keep singing because one day you're going to make it big. I thank God for that brother who was only 19 years old when he told me that. He really, really encouraged me and made me more determined than ever to make it. Words have power and they don't die. Words are atoms that don't die. They live on even after we are gone. So I thank God for this opportunity to share with you unlimited blessings for our cup. God bless you. I'll see you on Thursday night. Looking forward to it. God bless you. Amen.